Hey everybody! Hey guys! It is so good to be here. It is Thursday night and it's been almost three weeks since we have seen all of you face to face and let me tell you, we miss you. So, so glad you're joining us if you're from Chilliwack, Abbotsford, Mission, Langley, Aldergrove, welcome here. Uh, you might be noticing why me and Danae are doing this together is we're just combining our stuff together because, well, we're married and we live together. <laughs> So makes it a lot simpler. So this is going to be a time where we're all doing this together. Yeah, and some things that you can expect coming up over the next half hour-ish that this video happens um, is A, some interactive stuff, and you'll find out what that looks like in just a minute. Uh, we want to engage with you and do some fun stuff with you. Uh, the second thing you can expect uh, is to do some Bible reading. So yes, you will need to grab your Bible. So if you don't have it right now, pause the video, go get it, and come back. Uh, we're going to read the Bible. Luke is going to preach uh, from a new series we're starting called The Upper Room. And then to finish off, we're going to have some questions that are going to be included in this video for you to think over before you meet with your small groups. So we are going to do small group meetings after this video. We're hoping you connect with your leaders about um, a Zoom call or whatever platform you're deciding to use so you can actually have some, some face-ish to face uh, conversation about all that we're talking about tonight. We hope that that'll include some time of prayer so we can do this community new thing somehow, even though we're not together. So that's our hope. Thanks for being here. All right, everybody. Now time for the interactive part. And the interactive part is phone a friend or text a friend or FaceTime a friend. Be in communication with someone. So call anybody, FaceTime anybody that you want. Hey, you can even call me or Danae. What you're going to do is talk about something. And that something is, if you were a pastry, what kind of pastry would you be? Or since we're in quarantine, what kind of bread or pastry are you making during this thing? Pick up your phone, give somebody a call. So we are going to jump into some Bible reading in just a minute. But before we do that, uh, we want to give some background about this new series that we're starting. And it's called The Upper Room. Now, we're, we're going to be preaching out of the book of John. Um, and where we're landing in the story of Jesus is right at the end of Jesus's life and ministry. So all throughout the book of John, it tells the stories of, of Jesus healing and his teaching. Um, and his disciples, his 12 disciples, have been with him for about three years. Now, where we, we meet the story is, is um, coming just after Jesus has entered into Jerusalem with his disciples. You probably heard the story that happens on Palm Sunday where Jesus comes riding in on a donkey and there's palms being thrown on the ground. Um, and just after that happens, uh, Jesus gives specific instructions to some of his disciples to go to a certain house and set up uh, the Last Supper, the Passover meal in the upper room. So it's in this room that the, the conversation um, that Jesus has with his disciples, that's what we're actually going to be reading and studying over the next couple of weeks. So we're reading basically Jesus's last words to his closest followers. And there's going to be lots of good stuff um, coming ahead. So you can grab your Bibles, you can open it up to John chapter 13, and we're going to read that chapter together. John 13, 1 to 30. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter said, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. 
Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I am not referring to all of you. I know those who I have chosen. But this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which one of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. Hey everyone, welcome here. I'm glad you could join us on our first youth night after the pandemic has hit. And uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm just really glad that you guys are here. And so we're going to be studying, as you would have already heard from Danae, uh, in the book of John and our series is called The Upper Room. Uh, we're doing this because it actually, I think it fits in quite well. This is actually has to do with Jesus' last couple days on earth. And so we'll be studying what uh, Jesus said to his disciples before his death. And as I was thinking about this, there was a movie that came into my mind called The Last Holiday with Queen Latifah. You might have heard of it. You might have seen it. But anyways, there's this lady. She's working a dead-end job, and she uh, finds out that she's dying. And the movie is about what she does after she finds out she's dying, how she just lives a life of luxury after she finds that out. And then the movie ends with her actually finding out she's not dying, and then she still gets the man, and she gets her dream job, and she gets all this kind of stuff. And the movie, I think, it really shows that death brings out our true intentions and death brings out living for ourselves. You'll see a lot in it when people are dying and then that they have all these regrets that they wish they would have done and all these things. It's all about them, 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 them. But in the gospel, we actually see something that's so different. We see something that's, that's totally different than what our world thinks. And what Jesus does is he actually does something very weird when he knows that he's about to die. He actually humbles himself even more and he washes his disciples' feet. And so that's something that we're going to look over right now. And so we're going to go a couple of verses at a time and then we're going to have some dialogue. Uh, and so we're just going to be reading and then pointing out things from this text. And then after all this, you're going to go into your core group over Zoom or whatever platform your leader decided. So I'm going to read from the text here from John 13. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And so they're talking about the Passover festival. They're talking about all the way back uh, in Exodus when, when God actually called Israel out of Egypt. They were slaves in Egypt and God called them out. But they had to get freed. And so one of the ways they got freed was... Uh, God sent a couple plagues to the Egyptians to show, hey, let my people go. 
And he, they, they were saying to the, the people who are in power in Egypt, hey, let my people go. And then none of this bad stuff will happen. But they kept saying, no, 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 and no. And so finally, uh, what they had to do is God said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill every firstborn son in Egypt unless you put the blood of a lamb over top of the doorpost. And so all the Israelites did, the Egyptians didn't. And chaos assumed after that it, to Pharaoh eventually saying, all right, Israel, you can go. And so every year around this time that they got freed, Israel is to remember that they are actually freed from captivity. That there was a sacrifice made for them and that they are now free from the Egyptians. That they have a God. And this, this whole Passover festival is to remember that they are actually free from the oppressors. It actually even says, having loved his own who were in the world, and it shows that Jesus has loved these people so well, these people that he's celebrating the Passover festival so well. He's loved them so incredibly well all the way to the end, and the end meaning right up until his death. We're going to continue. Uh, verse 2, the evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took out his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, dying, drying them with the towel that he has wrapped around him. There's a couple things that are just that, that are absolutely just mind-blowing in this text. The first is Jesus knows what's going to happen. He's in the midst of someone who is going to betray him to his death. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of him actually looking death so close in the eyes, he can feel it coming, that he's going to return to God soon. And so what does Jesus do? He actually, Jesus takes all the money out and he starts buying all these things and all these experiences and trying to live as much for himself in that moment. But, that's, but actually, that's not what he does. Jesus does something so much greater. He actually humbles himself even more so. So he humbled himself once as God became man, but then man became servant. He humbled himself as a servant. If, if you're following along with our Bible study in Philippians 2, in uh, verses 6 and 7, it says that Jesus took the appearance of a servant. And nothing is more of a servant than taking off your outer garment, towing around your waist, and using it as a towel. Using the clothes you wear to dry someone's feet. Jesus is showing how humble he is, that his mission is to serve people. I think that's just an incredible moment. You see the contrast between Queen Latifah in the last holiday and Jesus Christ. Someone who deserves everything, but he gave it all away. He became a servant. I'm going to continue reading. Uh, in verse 6, he came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you do not realize what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that is why he said not everyone was clean. I feel like I, I feel like I would say the same things that Peter says. He just he's like a, a talking thing of what my brain thinks. He he says stuff, and then I, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah, Peter, I'm right with you. And then Jesus just contrasts him, and it's like, oh no, Peter, that was wrong. The interesting part about this is that. Who's still at the table when he's washing feet? Judas. And Jesus is still serving the one who is going to betray him. Now think about this. You, you know who is going to betray you, and you still wash their feet. Jesus is amazing. The, the humbled attitude that he has, willing to do this, is something that, that is incredible. The washing of his feet is the symbolic of, of that these people are clean. And Jesus even says not all of them are clean because Judas is going to betray him. 
And then Peter, Peter so brashly says, now clean my whole body. And Jesus is like, no, 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 you don't get it. If you've taken a bath, all you need is just to wash your feet. And what Jesus is saying is that this, this salvation can only one, you can only be saved by Jesus. That many other things will try to make you clean in this world. You will try all the good works you can to be clean, but there's only one that can clean you. You can wash as much times and keep your upper body clean, but no matter what, your feet will get dirty. Because you have to remember, they wore sandals back then. They wore sandals and their feet were always dirty. And so they could clean their upper body, but no matter what, their feet were going to get dirty, just like us. We can try to clean ourselves as much as we want, but we will always sin. We will always mess up. And Jesus is saying, he is the only one that can clean us. He is the only one that can forgive our sins. Jesus is showing that he is the one that people need. Jesus is the Savior. Not anything else in this world can keep you clean but him. We'll continue with verse 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I mean, Jesus is just throwing it right out there for these guys. Do as I do. Say as I say. Like this washing of your feet is not just an exercise, it's a practice that you should do. How can you humble yourself and help the people that are around you? Jesus showing his disciples how to live. Jesus showing self-sacrifice and how his disciples should follow. If you are a disciple of Jesus, this is what you should do. Serve the people around you. Jesus is showing that his whole life is about service. In this final acts, Jesus is showing even more so what he is here to do. If we are truly Jesus' disciples, we will go out there and wash people's feet. And now how does that look in our culture? How does that look in your life? And amidst amidst being maybe self-quarantined or in isolation or whatever your situation is right now, how can you do this? How can you be Jesus' practical hands? How can you wash people's feet? What does that look like in your scenario? Verse 18, I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I'm telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen to you, believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accept the one who sent me. Jesus is making a big statement here. Whoever accepts the people that are that belong to Jesus accepts Jesus. Whoever accepts Jesus will accept those who Jesus sent. So these are your brothers and sisters are the ones who love Jesus. They will love Jesus' brothers and sisters. His disciples, they will love him. Vice versa, both. You don't get to pick and choose. You can't love Jesus, but not like your brother or sister in Christ. As, as Christians, we love our brothers and sisters. We love Jesus. We love our brothers and sisters. We love our brothers and sisters. We love Jesus. Can't choose one or the other. If you have been changed by the washing that Jesus has done for us, how then are you supposed to go out after this? Verse 21, after he said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back Jesus against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. So Jesus told him, what you're about to do, do quickly. 
but no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had a, cha a charge of the money, some thought Jesus was going to tell him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Jesus had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. The interesting thing here is that Ju Judas was around this table the whole time. The Judas, Judas fit in quite well. All the disciples didn't think anything. So when he got up and left, they're just like, oh, I, I guess he's just going to go do something. He was right there the whole time. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we can be so close to who Jesus is and still miss the whole point of why he came. Some of us can be right next to him and not even know what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Some of us have been going to church our whole lives and still not know who Jesus is. Do you right now know who Jesus is, know how awesome he is, know what life he brings? At the end, in verse 30, it says, he went out and it was night. And this shows that darkness is coming, that when evil thinks that it actually triumphed over God is coming, that Jesus' death is impending, it is here, it is close, it is near. The writer is using it as a literary device to show that something bad is going to happen. And so we're going to get to that eventually. We're going to get to uh, the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. But uh, we have a couple more chapters to read first of seeing what Jesus and his disciples did in his last couple hours. What did he say to his disciples? Some really impactful stuff that we're going to dig deeper through. So some application points of what are we to do when we read a text like this? I think one is we need to be humble. We need to showcase what it looks like to be humble. In the times that we live today, how can we do better? How can we live like Jesus better? One of the greatest examples I see in my life is my wife. And it rhymed. Uh, my wife is constantly asking me, like, Luke, how can I love you better? How can I, how can I treat you better? I mean, that, that, that is something that is so beautiful. And yes, you understand that it's the marriage relationship. And yes, we're going to have to live together for the rest of our lives. But how do we do that with our friends and family? Are we going up to our friends and saying, how, how can I love you better? Because I think that should be the kind of attitude we take as Christians is how can I love you better? Mom, dad, how can I love you better? Sibling, how can I love you better? What's the attitude? What's the heart posture? You see Jesus' heart posture? Humble. Got right down on his feet and he washed the dirty feet. How can we emulate that? And then also, how often are we like Peter? Talk first, listen last. We're so quick to put out our opinion we're so quick to just say what we want instead of just sitting and waiting. Sometimes I think Peter shows, maybe we should just sit and listen. We have a great teacher out there. His name is Jesus. He wants us to sit and listen. I'm going to pray and then... Uh, Hopefully everyone has a room to be in for their Zoom call or Discord or whatever app you are using. Hope you have a good time in your core groups. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for your word and how it is so good. God, help us to live a life uh, that shows that we've been washed by Jesus. That Jesus is the one who's washed our feet and saved us from our sin. That he's the only one who can clean us. Father, help us to be more humble as Jesus was. We pray this all through your Son's name by the power of your Spirit. Amen. Northview. Oh. So that was our teaching for tonight. And before we finish uh, this video, we want to give you a couple of questions that we want you to think over um, based off of what Luke taught from God's word. The first thing is that there, is there one thing that you learned about who God is based off of what Luke talked about? 
The second thing is, uh, is there one thing that, that actually you might have a question about, something that came up as you were listening to Luke teach? Maybe it's from the passage, maybe about something that he said. Was there one question that you have? And finally, what is one thing um, that might impact how you think and how you act this week based on what Luke spoke on? Is there something that God put on your heart that's changing how you're thinking or how you're seeing the world around you? Take a couple minutes and think about these things and then you'll meet in your small groups and you can talk about them. That you've enjoyed this evening. Uh, we've enjoyed getting it ready for you in hopes and, and, and praying that God would be able to stir in your hearts uh, encouragement from God's word. Yeah. So now it's time for you to join your core groups in a gathering. And we'll see you next week.